My name is Philip Daniel Mole. I will be taking you in GST 111 Communication in English. Study 1. The title is Study Skills in English. Uh, by way of introduction, I want to believe that you've been involved in one form of study or the other at the various levels of your education. You will notice that studying in the university is somewhat more demanding and a lot more cumbersome than it is at the other levels. This is why taking you this note <coughs> through this study session of study is very imperative. By the end of this study session, you should be able to define what study skill is, list and explain factors that can make or mar your ability to understand what is right, discuss not taking and not making, identify and discuss the different types of not taking. So what is study skill? Study skill are habits and acquired dispositions. They are behavioral pattern built up and internalized through consistent and persistent practice over time. The definitions above have show that these are skills we acquire. These skills have become a habit or a way of life. We can also see study skills as the ability to read, to understand, to comprehend, to assimilate and internalize what has been read. It is only when you are able to recall and internalize what you have read that we can say study has taken place. It is important to stress that study is a landscape. The more you devote your time in learning something, the more you will get perfect in it. You will therefore need to discipline yourself, be persistent, and be consistent as well as undergo some very rigorous exercises in order to succeed in your academics. Also note that study is a very serious academic exercise that demands attention and concentration. As a result, you must be physically, mentally, emotionally healthy to comprehend and assimilate what you are reading. Um, we shall be looking at factors that can mar or make a student performance in school. And there are several factors that can make you to either succeed or not succeed. You may wonder why some students seamlessly pass their exams while others fail woefully. We shall be considering some factors below that could either make you do well or not to do well in your academics. Number one is choice of course. The course which you choose could either make you to do well or not to do well. In choosing a course, you should ensure that you are choosing a course in your areas of strength, not in your area of weaknesses. What do I mean by that? Those subjects where you got good grades in are the subject that you should choose a combination of that will give you a good course. So let's imagine that you are scoring very good grades in sciences and you decide to come and you know read a course in either arts or social sciences where you don't do well. You will notice that you would actually not do well. The next one is accommodation. Where you live to study is very, very important. I normally tell my students to stay within the campus, in the hostels, and there are very good reasons why they need to do that. There are a lot of facilities which you could use. The classroom is there, you could go and study. The library is there, you could go and read. And then aside from that, your study group, people, your course mates that you could always meet 
together after every lecture in order to discuss what you have discussed with your teacher in school. Those things will make you to actually do well. Always have a table, a reading table and a chair. <clears throat> it is very, very important so that you would be able to study well. Make adequate arrangement for the lightening of your room. Do not depend on PHP neighbor. Study in well ventilated rooms or environment. Don't go and cage yourself in an unventilated room and say you are studying. You can easily sleep. The use of drugs and stimulants. Avoid the use of drugs and stimulants. This is very, very important because drugs could, you know, make you to be deranged. You would have, you would have seen people who walk around um, in the streets, young, energetic people that are here. They never thought that they would be like that. The reason why they are working like that is because they engage themselves in taking drugs and stimulants, and therefore they have found themselves in a situation where they are in. Distra distraction. Distraction is anything that takes away your attention from what you are doing. And we basically have two types of distraction. Uh, physical <coughs> distraction and internal distraction. Now, distraction, anything at all that will take away your attention from what you are doing should be avoided. Don't study in noisy environment. Don't allow your friends to distract you when you have set a goal for you to do. You want to study, always discipline yourself to ensure that that time that you have set for yourself you will utilize it. Your eating habits as well could cause you not to do well. It's not every food that you eat in order to go and study. Some of us, whatever food we see, we want to eat. You eat very light food when you want to study. Don't take heavy food like tuo, eba, gabza, apple, and so on and so forth. Make use of study materials. Study materials comes in forms of dictionaries, critical test books, mathematical sets, uh, and so on and so forth. So whenever you want to study, ensure that you have those things close by, so that when there is need for you to use them, you will just use them. Make use of index cards. Index cards are some materials which <coughs> we use in order to jot out points. And you should always jot out points when you study. Attend lectures regularly. In the university, if you do not attend lectures for up to 75%, you would not be allowed to write the exams. I want to talk to you on organizing your study time. You must know that time is a very precious, essential commodity in the tertiary institution. Every activity, whether academic or extracurricular, has to be carefully planned within the semester to enhance your academic performance. With a careful planning, you will notice that there is enough time to invest in your studies. I am saying this because many a times students would be saying that the time that they have is not enough for them within the 24 hours. So you could organize your time and, and, and study well. The learner study time. As an individual, you should discover the period within which when you study, you understand best. For some, it is in the early hours of the morning, some in the afternoon, and some in the night. So as you plan your study time, take note of the following factors. Arrange your study period on a weekly basis, basis 
take note of your areas of strength and weaknesses. Have time for study breaks. <clears throat> And then the next top subtopic is study methods. By study method, we refer to how you choose to effectively study for maximum output. You may consider the following points. One, a planned personal study. Two, selection of an appropriate place to study. Three, effective use of the library. Use of test books and references. Effective study group adequate rest and sleep, recreation, adequate feeding, maintenance of good health. These are very important. Next thing we want to look at is not taking. What do we mean when we talk of not taking? Not taking is the art of writing down major points and important details. You hear or read from textbook, manuals, and lecture notes. It also involves writing down what you listen to during lectures, tutorials, seminars, and so on and so forth. The main purpose of note taking is to summarize the content of a lecture or a written text into its most important point with the aim of reading, recalling, and evaluating the substance of the note at a later stage. It helps to enforce concentration and ensure active study which is in conformity with our objectives to understand, to recall, um, <clears throat> recall everything, the content of what is being studied. What then is not making? Not making is what you are thinking and making up to develop an essay. For instance, if you were given a topic to write an essay on. You would need to outline the points one after the other before you start, start writing. The point you outline will enhance cohesion and unity in the essay. This is what we refer to as not making. Note that the process you used in not making is the same with not taking. The only difference is that you are reading and taking notes from either a lecture from a textbook or in not taking, in not taking on or the, or the other. You are thinking and developing by outlining the notes before writing in not making. You are encouraged to always make notes before writing when you are given an assignment and especially before you answer any question in an examination. There are several ways by which we can take down notes. And here we have up to about four ways by which we can take down notes. Uh, we can take down notes by the outline methods, by the branching methods, uh, by using abbreviation, by using symbols. Another way by which we can take down notes is by summarization. This is what you are, this is when you are asked to reduce a lengthy passage by half. And to do so, you will then only concentrate on the main point and other important details. Now, what is the outline? An outline is a vivid representation of the content and structure of any given piece of writing, reading, or lecture you listen to. It is a formal and sketchy statement of the content of a discourse to be written. It is a graphic writing containing the layout of an oral or written discourse for fast and effective re reading and revision. There are two types of formats. We have the British format of outlining and the American format of outlining. The British format of outlining involves the combination of Roman numerals, Arabic numerals, and letters. And here you will notice that the main points are usually notated by the use of capital Roman, uh, Roman numerals. Wherever you see capital Roman numerals, it is telling you that 
that is the main point. Uh, the secondary points are usually notated by the use of the capital letters. And uh, if there is any other point that is telling you more about the secondary points, they are usually notated by the use of the Arabic letters. That is one, two, three, four. And then if there's anything that is telling you more about such points, they are notated by the use of small letters, A, B, C, D. These are contained in the models. The American format of outlining. The American format of outlining contains Arabic numerals where you use 1.0 for main ideas, 1.1 for subdivision of the main ideas, that is the secondary ideas, uh, 1.2 for points that are telling you more about the secondary ideas, 1.2.1 if there are subdivisions of the ideas in the second in the secondary ideas 2.0 is used for main ideas 2.1 for secondary ideas 2.1.1 for points that are telling you more about the secondary ideas and you could have several uh, secondary ideas which you could use and therefore you could have 2.1.1 2.1.2 2.1.3 for 2.3. Next uh, type of <coughs> note taking is the branching method. This is a type of note taking which is useful, especially when you have not been given an outline of the lecture. It enables you to develop your notes as the lecture proceeds in a flexible manner. It is also argued that this type of layout makes it easier to recapture the speaker's original message and to see the relationship between ideas more clearly. And in this figure one diagram that you see, it's the, normally the topic is acquiring information. And so the topic of any uh, lecture is usually, you know, put on a plane sheet, in a cycle, in a cycle, on a plane sheet, and then the main points there are usually shown by the use of lines. Of course, here in this one, we see that the student can acquire information from. Uh, lecturers from their tutors and they could do that from lectures from tutorials and from seminars and the other one says student could acquire uh, information from uh, other experts and we have such things like the television listening to radio and so on and so forth and then the student could acquire information from fellow students. This could be done through seminars which they attend, tutorials which they, they attend, and conversation which they involve in. Finally, student could develop his own ideas. So you will be able to see the fact that the whole point graphically. <coughs> we could use abbreviation as well. These are very, very indispensable in good note taking. They are used in order to make notes more quickly. You must decide which words to abbreviate and how to abbreviate them. You could also use symbols. Symbols are used in note taking and note making. Most of the symbols are usually mathematical signs. They contain variety of meanings. <clears throat> in conclusion, in this study session, you have learned that study skills are habits which are learned 
and acquired through consistent and persistent practice over time. Study reading and study, though inseparable, are not the same because you can read a whole voluminous book and yet not understand. There are many factors that can mar or enhance your uh, performance in school. You should organize your time and discipline yourself to observe it. Not taking does not mean taking down notes words for words as it is detected by the lecturer, but the ability to take down the major points, secondary points, and other important details. There are different ways by which you can take notes, such as the outline method, the branching method, the use of abbreviation, and the use of symbols. Thank you for listening.